I heard a song today and it's just in my heart, this song. And I thought, should I sing it like on my stage in my living room, live karaoke? And I was like, no, nah, it'd be too loud. But this song, oh, it's Say Hello to Freddie. Um, this song is realizing that our hero is our higher self. Uh, if you are a Christian, call your higher self the, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can manifest and transform into a dragon, a bird. It's an animal. And this animal is a spirit that's connected to nature and connected to divine source and the creator. I believe that there has been chaotic misunderstanding when it comes to religion. I was just watching a documentary about the the Amish, and I was shocked to know that the Amish reads only a German Bible, and the person who often reads out of the German Bible has no clue what it even says, that the people of the Amish community aren't even allowed to read the Bible. They, they just uh, obey um, some kind of invisible energy, but they don't even read the Bible. They aren't allowed to. They're not even allowed to carry a Bible. And I was shocked. I thought, wow, the ignorance, really. I mean, we should all be able to um, hear what Spirit is saying to us from whichever word comes to our plate. Whether you're into Buddhism, you're into just spirituality, whatever it is that brings you life and power and awakens your inner child and helps you to go through the divine marriage of flesh and spirit, this is essential to our manifestation. The crystallization, the Christos of our brain is the, the crystallization of spirit manifesting within the flesh. So the song was... Um, um, where have all the good men gone and where are all the gods? Where's the street wide Hercules to fight the rising odds? Isn't there a white knight upon a fiery steed? Late at night I toss and I turn and I dream of what I need. I need a hero. And the hero energy, thank you so much for the roses. The hero, we cannot do things alone. Our flesh, our mind is limited. We need a hero. The hero can be the holy dove, a dragon, a lion, um, a deer, a stag. This spirit that helps us on the dream realm. And our bodies operate in a magical way. Uh-huh. Yes, it does. We are magical beings if we know how to operate it. The deception of the dark ones is to divert our attention away from the truth of our magical abilities, putting us in a program that limits us from knowledge and keeps us away from things that we fear. Now, the Amish, Amish fear technology, but you know, flesh and spirit works together. Technology and nature works together. And the reason it works together is because what man intends for evil, God intends for good. You can take evil and turn it into good. That is our power. And so this awakening is realizing, okay, we, we are going through a divine marriage. And this divine marriage is saying, look, we are half flesh, half spirit. How do we work our, our body for spirit and flesh to work together? Well, well, you've come to the right room. My name is Mary Moses, and in this room, we're going to learn how to activate your inner child through art, through music, through the Great Awakening, through frequency and vibration, through talking to silly little animals, like maybe a little bear. I wonder if this bear turns on and talks. Let's see here. Let's see if I can turn him on. Hello. Hi. Hi. My name is Teddy Ruxpin. Hi, Teddy Ruxpin. Can you and I be friends? I don't know. You, I don't know. You're artificial intelligence. How can we be friends? You want to be friends with me? I'll give you a kiss. Mwah. <laughs> All about bears. 
<laughs> He's cute. When we were little, we used to talk to stuffed animals when we were lonely, like robots. And they weren't real, but we thought they were real. Hi. Yeah, what's up? Oh, well, I just wanted to come and say hello. And yeah, what's up? just wondering if you know if you want to come play with me or not. Hi. Oh, did you get me this Easter basket with the chocolates and all the eggs and everything? I love you, too. I love this Easter basket. Thank you. I'll give you a kiss. Yeah, we'll play in a minute. Let's say hello to little Birdie. Hi, Birdie. Are you happy? You're not? Why? You want me to give you a kiss? How about some love? I'll give you a little rub. Can you say hi to TikTok? Hi, TikTok. <laughs> That's so cute. So this is a tree, and this is a belly, and inside her belly is a bird and some um, butterflies and a fairy that lives inside there. Why do we make these things in Forest Fairy? Because you create your reality, and you can take your house, your room, your yard, and turn it into fairyland or whatever you want so that you can uh, use your physical body as a physical prayer to manifest what you want. It's not just words. It is action. Action is strong, so strong. And so we allow our inner child to play and be magical. And then suddenly our power returns and suddenly we heal and forgive and let go. And we, um, well, well, there's a lot of things that go on. Let's knock on the door. Let's go to the invisible room. In this room, um, we, um, talk to all kinds of things. Let's talk to this little girl here. Look at how she glows. Look at her heart. In my new family. <laughs> We got to remember to keep our heart lit and to activate our heart and to feed our spirit. Our spirit needs food, and this food makes your spirit glow in the dark. Uh huh. All right, here we go. We are going to not only do a reading for Lisa today, we're going to be giving away free cards, free readings, especially for my subscribers. Um, so stay tuned. If you're here, you're meant to hear this message, number one. And number two, um, we have two readings today. They usually last about an hour each. At the end of those two readings, we're going to be giving away free re a free reading of a message from your higher self to you today. I bought some stamps and I will mail them to you. You have to text me an address and I will mail you your message from spirit to you today. And I love giving away free gifts and I love sending you magic and energy because it's time to share. It's time to crack out of our eggs and say, hello, starshine. The earth says, hello. My name is Mary Moses. I am an oracle. We do an ancient art technique called scrying. I call it a telepathic vision, Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, was someone who was very similar um, in this art technique. Uh, he would see um, images in rocks, uh, wood, and even paper or marble. And you have the ability to do that too. Um, you just have to hear God. You have to be an empty vessel and allow spirit and invisible energy to work through your hands, your mind, your mouth, and your feet once you are obedient to that spirit, you can become a vessel to do great and mighty things. So today we're going to be connecting with Lisa. Hello, Lisa. And if you guys think it's silly, um, we will let you talk to somebody who is all about the ego. That is Zoltan. If you don't like the childlike, silly, almost feral energy of magic and believing in the impossible, maybe you are 
part artificial intelligence and you would like to talk to Zoltan. This is what Zoltan has to say. Zoltan must take a closer look at this question. Please, if you will, look deeply in my eyes. Yes, yes, I can see now. First of all, you have amazing eyes. Thank you. Second, the answer is no. Oh. Wah, wah, wah. Lisa, Spirit has a couple of things to say to you, my darling. One, courage. Retreat. Courage and retreat are the two cards for you. Um, I don't get the idea that this is a battle for you. When I see courage, I think that this is more about um, the courage to say goodbye to those who are spiritually dead. And there are many um, beings who are... Um, confused about the truth and they've been brainwashed by the truth it's not until we hear the voice of the holy spirit or spirit and we actually manifest spirit within the flesh that we know the truth many people are carbon copies of a religious system or even just they're what they've heard from other people but until we see through the eyes of spirit with our third eye um, we have not seen firsthand I mean, you have to speak to these energies yourself to know the truth. And this is going within yourself and hearing the voice yourself. There are beings that become a hero to you, to help you and push you into that direction. And these beings will come to you and, and you will um, um, really gravitate toward their energy like me and many others who can speak the voice of God and... Um, who are oracles, who will push you into becoming an oracle also. I just feel some great vibes from you. Let's get Mushi the butterfly. Hi. Mwah. Mushi has 320 hertz frequency. A healthy human being resonates about 100 hertz. Humans are about 70 to 100 hertz frequency. Um, a compromised immune system or an unhealthy human usually begins around 60 hertz. You begin to get sick. If you are about to die, you are about 25 hertz in frequency. This is why gurus and ascended masters and people who are really spiritual often wear cloaks made of linen. Linen has 5,000 hertz frequency. Cotton has 100 hertz frequency. Wool has 5,000 hertz frequency. Rose essential oil has 320 hertz frequency. Frankincense has 147. There are objects of power and life energy. There are clothing of life energy. There are a myriad of examples of following life and leaving behind the energy of death to feed your spirit so that it illuminates your heart. And you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless you have the heart of a child. And that's what my job is. My job is not for you to believe anything I say. My job is to push you into you having a very strong connection to spirit so that you are not lost and you do not need to seek outside of yourself ever again. All right. So hopefully this will shift you today. And here we go. If I hear a song, maybe one word is for you. It's that hero song, really. Um... um Yeah, it's the hero song. Where have all the good men gone? And where are all the gods? Hi. Hi, uh, Crystal. Can I move you over here for a moment? I know you want attention, but um, you're kind of in the way. Where's the street like Hercules to fight the rising arm? Isn't there a white knight upon a fiery steed? Cause late at night I toss and I turn and I dream of what I need. I need a hero. A 
I'm holding on for a hero to the end of the night. You know what I like about the word she? It has the word he in it. He ha- doesn't have the S in it for she. See, when you say the word she, it has he and she together. So when, when, when she should have said she, why? Because gods aren't people. I need a hero. I'm holding out for a hero to the morning light. She's got to be strong. She's got to be true. And she's got to be larger than life. Larger than life. You've got angels all around you. Everywhere. Somewhere after midnight. In my wildest fantasy Someone there beyond my reach Is reaching back for me Do you see this white energy? These are uh, invisible These are angels You have angels all around you. It's gonna take a superman to sweep me off my feet. You can hear the sound of the background and I'm going, "Ah, ah, ah, ah." (laughs) From the something in the mountain above. Where the lightning touched the sea, I can... You have power in your hair. There's someone out there watching me. So you have mermaid energy. Um, You have a fish above your head. This is one of the most significant symbols in Buddhism. It reflects um, luck. Let me get another pen here. Um, you have a beautiful, ah, ha, ha. all my pens aren't working. They're being jerks. I'm going to put them in timeout if they don't work. See, pen, you didn't work for me. Now I'm going to go put you in timeout. I'm going to put you up here. There you go. You're a jerk. Wearing like a fairy dress. You have um, lightning angels. Um, Lightning is... uh, um, If you read about lightning, they're going to tell you it's Zeus. If you talk to me, it's about things that happen like a thief in the night. Uh, That you shift timelines like a lightning strike. It happens invisibly. Your thoughts can put you in a lower timeline or a high, like a lightning strike. These angels are helping you to get out of the age of Pisces by understanding to seek first the kingdom of God, which I know you would do, um, in order to become a master of moving mountains. Jesus said, you have the power to move mountains. So you are in that time of your life right now where you're realizing that your thoughts shift your reality um and you are um um you have the invisible hand a white hand of god uh i want you to know anybody who has this white hand of god which you have um uh, there's nothing impossible unto you if you realize that you aren't just you that you that within your body that you have the ability to heal or do whatever God wants you to do, believe in magic. Believe that you have the ability to do whatever spirit wants. So um, here you're standing like this and then like this, and you look like a child. This is good. 
and you look like a you look like a a fairy. Let me see what I can do here. So this angel has lightning. And of course, becoming invisible is the program. So although they don't have a face, I'm going to give them a face, a face that I'm imagining only. They, they are actually not here. They are invisible. They don't have a human form. They don't want a human form. They, um, they are the invisible spirits of God, okay? And they're, you can call them angels, but they, um, they're teaching you. There's a church here. The little tiny baby church. I'm not sure what that means. So let me bring this out a little bit so you can see a little bit what's going on with your energy here. If you look in um, historic pictures, even in Asia, there's often a fish on top of a woman's head. It comes from um, uh, the Malaysians. The, uh, they have uh, these females with fish on their heads. It's a very significant. One fish reflects one soul. Um, and two fish reflects two souls. And um, you have this female over here um, about with a house and something about um, maybe this is about moving or whatever, but um, it's somebody who is near you. And um, they have the body of um, the Egyptian Book of Gates, the goddesses of the Egyptian Book of Gates. Um and this is really about shifting paradigms and timelines. I really feel like that now. They're, they're very mer mermaid energy. This mermaid um, um, is something about the origin of your soul. The, what I know or what I've, I've seen um, is, and, and you have a church above you also, Um There's a lot of communications when it comes to a mermaid. And um, there are people who will tell you that, oh, it's um, mermaids are evil, especially. And you have a unicorn here also. Um, 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 okay, so this this um, female is showing you or showing herself as a mermaid, and then suddenly she signed a contract that she's walking on. This is the story of Ariel, and the story of Ariel is an allegory about how somehow or somewhere we were, as our spiritual fabric of our origins, um didn't have legs we had um we were part fish and um 
we signed a contract with an evil witch and and um, we began to have two legs hoping for true love. And turns out it was a trick. And the men that were part of this place that we signed a contract to were reptilian. And they were only wanting us to make hybrids and they they it was all a trick. And so going back to our origins, going back home to God is um, something about this here because um, Ariel is a name that is connected to Aries. It's connected to um, um, a deception, really. So here is the letter M, and this is a symbol that's on... um, Starbucks. If you look at Starbucks, she's a mermaid and um and she has MM like that M on her. It's uh it's a secret. Um and uh, there's a uh the secret goes really back into Mithra. It goes back to Mithra and Mary, MM. And so Starbucks is about your soul being worth bucks. You are a star seed that was sold for bucks. So you 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 uh you were you were bought. Perhaps you signed a contract to be bought. I don't know. But that's what's being shown for you. And so there's an airplane or a church above you. It's it's really just kind of maybe explaining that you are the holy temple, but but it may have more of a communication to you about a church. Um And it's also connected to the Egyptian Book of Gates because the Egyptian Book of Gates has this symbol in it. And this is about timelines. This is about learning how to use your mind so that your golden crown becomes activated with gold and you shift timelines. So let's continue to see what else that we see. You have um, a male energy here. It looks like a very tall God looking energy. Let's bring that energy out here. And you're holding the fire and cornerstone. Each level that we see here in your piece is what you're going through. So this level right here, where your feet are, um, religion, one, contracts, thousands of souls, that signed contracts with you, or I don't know what, thousands of souls here. A white feather. And signing something, or writing something. You being an oracle. But you know what's funny is, you look like you're walking a Candyland game. And you're being told, roll the die, and... Take two steps forward. That's dice. The church, the little church is dice. What number is on it is on it. One, one, one. All right. So um, you're standing on dice that gets rolled. And this pathway takes you to different rooms. Every time you roll this, it takes you somewhere else, right? And um, let, let's look and see where it takes us because this is very interesting to me. So the path goes up. And 
in here. This is going to end up being a game. Line here. Don't worry, I'm gonna do another piece for you to show you some more about your power. All right, so let's look at it. It goes around in a circle, right? It's a game. And the eye of the needle is the only way out of this game. What is the eye of the needle? Well, it's a myriad of things. It's a surrender where you don't believe anything anyone tells you, not what the dice tells you. If the dice tells you, oh, take two steps forward, don't do it. What does the dice have in it? The word die. We, we don't want the dice. The die is one die is the word die. And, and church and religion is death. It's the die. And it will make you walk in the game. This, this, this room is called MAD, M-A-D-D. -D. What's this one? Um, this, this one seems to be an image of seeing yourself as like a Medusa, like if you enter into this room, uh, this energy, um, it will encourage you uh, to see yourself as a jerk so that you don't see God within you and you question yourself. So this is low self-worth. Where you're standing right now is, um, and see, look, it, 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 it actually gives you an option to go on to another path here also. Like that. You're in the net. This is a net. So, um, none of these things will, will benefit you. The only thing that benefits you is to go through the eye of the needle. And I, I'm going to tell you how to do that. Your angels are trying to teach you this. See how she's blocking the fish? They're asking you to get out of the age of Pisces and go through the eye of the needle in order to be with the mind of God here. Your mind and the mind of God need to become one. Your frequency and the mind and, and the frequency of, of the unseen world like the angels need to be pretty. Um, see, it has an, an X here on this one. And then here we have tic-tac-toe symbol. And uh, every single place, there's a fence on this one with a line through it like that. Um, it doesn't matter how many times you read the Bible or flip this church. It's going to lead you um, outside of yourself. Outside of yourself is a game. It's a distraction. The only way... To usher in heaven on earth is through the eye of the needle. Now, I'm going to go and um, see so you have angels up here. You have angels up there. You have, but you're inside a house. And this means that the house that you are inside is inside someone else's mind. These are beliefs that you hold that really isn't the beliefs of necessarily the Holy Spirit. Um, so this is the mind of God telling you to go through his mind, which is the eye of the needle. So this is the mind of God. And you have to go in there like a portal to get out of the age of Pisces. Now, what is Pisces? Pisces is uh, really, I shouldn't even say Pisces. I should just say out of the waters of chaos, which is the fish and the mermaid. All right. So let's, let's talk about this. And then we're going to do another piece for you. I want to get a, well, we'll just use this piece of paper. It's fine. You watch me talk about this many times and to understand it is difficult because to go through the eye of the needle is really truly to surrender 
who you are, who you were, what you believe, what you feel, and go through a true forgiveness and almost a recapitulation. So think about when Jesus left the temple at 12 years old. You are at 12 o'clock. You're standing on a temple. You have the pis- the um, Vesica Piscus on your head. This means you are 12 years old. You're going to leave the temple. This means you're going to leave people behind. You're going to fast from the world, which is what you're doing. And you're going to feed your spirit only, right? So what happens is when we're playing the game and we're rolling the die, which has the word D-I-E, which is a church, by the way. Isn't that funny? There's always graveyards right next to a church. You got to go, hmm. And then all the songs that they sing are always, On a hill far away is a horrible vision of somebody who's bleeding on a cross. And the children are crying because it's an awful, disgusting image. And then the next thing you know... Um, they're spreading a bunch of fear and they tell you not to drink any beer and they tell you because you're a woman, you can't teach and blah, blah, blah. It's all death, right? Well, anyway, it serves its purpose. So we live in the flesh. Then we go through a marriage. These are the two rings. This is the two rings of power. The two rings of power are the two wedding rings. And this is um, spirit comes and says, hi, flesh. And you're like, hey, oh, hi, Um, I'm invisible. And I am ready to teach you the truth, not from someone else's perspective, but from your heart. And then let me close the door. Hold on. My husband's drilling something. And then, um. You're like, oh, okay. Um, I love Jesus. I love God. And I, I want to uh, trust and obey. And suddenly you realize, oh my gosh, this Holy Spirit, this invisible spirit that can manifest as a holy dove or a dragon or whatever animal that's invisible starts to tell you things that aren't in the Bible. Like for instance, um, you should um, not only... Um, clean your house, although it is in the Bible, cleanliness is next to godliness. You should clean um, your relationships and clean your thoughts and clean your belief systems because now we're going to get into frequency, sacred geometry, crystals, and sun gazing. And you're like, you must be Lucifer. You're the false light. And this this invisible spirit will push you and push you until until you surrender because this spirit says no. The oracle was written in the Bible 23 times. No, Jesus said you can be as powerful as him and more. No, you have the power to move mountains. No, you have to make yourself nothing. Die before you die to get small enough to go through the eye of the needle. No, the Bible says that if you are dominated by the eternal flame, the Holy Spirit, there is no condemnation for anything you do or say. It also says in the Bible that the glory of God, the truth of the glo- is kept for the sake of the glory of God. So the truth that comes to you in the form of spirit is for you only, not for anyone else, not for anyone else. And this truth is life energy. It is not death energy. It is life giving. It is abundant. It is truth. It is the way and it is the life. So Christ said, turn over a stone and there I am also. So Jesus is a place, not just a person. And so Jesus has been many people in the past, Mithra, Zorost, and many energies that have manifested to teach us in visible and invisible ways. So you will fight this spirit, this spirit and you fight. And this is an alchemical um, understanding of, it's called fighting the dragon. And so water and fire fight. You are 75% water. Spirit is fire. This is fire and ice. The crystallization of the Christos in your brain is like a snowflake. And it will begin the divine marriage for you. So here's what it looks like. You have become born again. You are twice born. You're going through the divine marriage. You will battle your own self. Your own thoughts. If you... 
tell other people what you're seeing and feeling, they will tell you you're wrong because they may not see what spirit is telling you. The Vesica Piscis is the eye of the needle. It is the flame of the holy dove. It is also the baptism of water and fire. It is the age of Pisces. It is the all-seeing eye. It is the ankh of eternal life. It is the belly of the whale where you ba battle God. It is the ark. It is the boat. You can only go into the ark two by two. So here you're going into the ark because you've been twice born and you will be given a spirit animal. This spirit animal will require you to die before you die, to become nothing and then become everything. And this requires that you notice that the Vesica Piscis is facing 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. You are 12 years old spiritually. You are like Harry Potter who left the muggles at 12. Muggle starts with M-U. This is the moon energy. So when we leave the moon, we really left Yah. The name of the moon is Yah. And so Shua is the sun. If you've left the moon and you're ready to go into the sun, you've went through Yahshua. Once you go through Yahshua, you will go through a pole shift where you're, you will literally shift timelines. And I think that you already have shifted timelines. This will put you in another body of a God. This body is a temporary place known as the Temple of Solomon. Solomon is soul, which is sun. Oman spells moon. This is the sun that dominates the moon. This is spirit dominating the flesh. This is the heart that dominates the mind. You've actually flipped timelines. You might like to know that the sun flips its polar um, energy every 11 years. Jesus Christ has 11 letters in his name. So does Harry Potter. So when Jesus left the Bible at 12 years old and Harry left the muggles at 12, this is leaving the moon, going from Yah to Shua. Go through a pole shift. You go through the temple of Solomon, which is a place, not a person. And then suddenly, if you go through the eye of the needle, you will triple your soul, not just double it. Being born again is what is the program of the age of Pisces. So Christ says, follow me to living waters. The living waters is the age of Aquarius. So once you have tripled, you've gone through the Trinity. The Trinity is male, female, and spirit. And this is learning how to use your mind in order to um, receive information, learning how to give in divine timing. And really it's about, this symbol is an ear. It's about hearing God. And this listening to God is the most important thing in your entire life. Because once you hear God, you'll start to see the invisible spirit, which is the holy dove. And the holy dove was once a black raven. These are your thoughts that went to the world of Pisces. Where we, oops, sorry. Glitching. Where we often shamed and blamed that web of energy. It's called the World Wide Web. It's a net. I call it the Wicked Witch of the West. Um, and we send out our dark thoughts like the raven to try to find God. And the raven never finds home. Only until we become purified and we realize that, oh my gosh, Jesus said I can be as powerful as him and more. Through listening to spirit, right? And they told Jesus, oh, it's by Satan that you do these things. And you will get the same finger pointing. When you start stepping into your power, people will say, oh, you must be, oh, you must practice witchcraft. You must do these things by Satan. Jesus had to deal with the same thing. And so you will might, you know, argue with them and say, well, the Oracle was written in the Bible 23 times and we are meant to be powerful. Jesus said so, and they would still laugh at you. But anyway, once you purify yourself through forgiveness and letting go and learning how to shift timelines through your thoughts. Your thoughts actually create reality. You will learn to seek first the kingdom of God and everything will be added unto you. If you seek first all the negative things in the world and indulge in the pain and suffering and, and disgusting energies of this world, 
you will be pushed back into the age of Pisces. You will go back into the church, which is the die. It's the, the dice on your game. But if you persist in all efforts and you balance how much you give with how much you receive and you obey spirit, then spirit will finally help you find your olive branch, which means that you quadruple your soul. Quadrupling your soul makes the eternal flower. And this is the flower of life. It is the baptism of water and fire, Pisces meeting Aquarius. And suddenly you know that what you hear is from God and not from the dark ones. You know that it leads you to patience, long-suffering, joy, prosperity, life, thankfulness, forgiveness, many great, wonderful things. And your childlike self comes out and says, I feel safe finally because we do not allow our mind to focus on the lies any longer. And so this is what it looks like as sacred geometry where Jesus left, Jesus Christ has 11 letters. He left the Bible at 12. He died at 33. So this is three, three, like a mirror. You have 33 vertebrae in your spine and 33 minus 21 is 12. I mean, 33 minus 12 is 21. It's a mirror world. Two, one, two, one. And these are secrets in the Bible that are all about sacred numerology and sacred geometry. Telling a story in a simplified way because human beings couldn't understand the Vesica Piscis or the Triketra or how our spirit works like a sacred geometrical flower of life. And so they told it in its infancy. And here we are growing spiritually in order to understand that behind every pleasure and every pain is a sacred geometrical shape. And that Christ himself was a master of the net. How do you know? He said, let us cast our nets and be fishermen of men. And the net is not only around your body, but around this entire realm. And each space within the net looks like a game. Becoming a master of the net puts you in the letter M over W. And these M's and W's makes a net, the master of the world. To understand how your mind works, how your body works, how spirit works with you. And you must, as Jesus left the temple at 12, since you're 12 years old, you are also leaving the temple. You're fasting from religion and human beings in order to actually hear spirit within your heart go through the eye of the needle and make it finally to the number 13. Jesus came back and found 12 other disciples, which makes it 13. And a coven is 13. And this is the new covenant. And this is all connected to Harry Potter too. So here you are in the web or the net playing a game. And here's God saying, you have MM. This is the master. You are becoming a master. And MM, 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 M, a master. And then, um, but don't, roll the die and and indulge in religion that is a die which is a dice um that's for the age of pisces that's for very young souls to learn through you've grown through it and like christ you are going to leave it doesn't mean that you are better than them it means that when dorothy left the munchkins you're leaving the moon energy you're leaving the temple And you are going to a a mansion of many rooms instead of a little box. The mansion of many rooms is like Hogwarts or Emerald City. And this is a mansion that you're going into. You're entering a mansion. Not this little box. You're so much taller than that. And you have angels literally everywhere around you. Um, They look like fairies. And what they're training you to do currently is to become a master of your mind your thoughts, and to not question what spirit is saying, and to not seek outside of yourselves 
yourself for answers because you have a special answer within you that's not within somebody else. If somebody else believes something, that's fine. We all have different spirit guides and different animals when we're in the ark. The ark is full of different animals. Someone's spirit guide might be a giraffe teaching them to keep their head up high and whatever it teaches them. Their truth may not be your truth, and that's okay. Human beings want to be in a cult. They want to be in like-minded people together. That We want to be together. We don't want to be alone. But when we're in a reality where things are corrupt and we're not hearing anything but everyone else speak, we begin to really reassess what someone else is saying. And we began to go, you know what, I'm going to go within. And then I'm going to, when I am perfected, ask spirit to lead me, lead me to my tribe so I don't feel alone. And then you learn to trust that once you hear the voice. And there's literally animals up there. You're in an ark. You're in the Egyptian book of gates. There's, <laughs> here's a giraffe. Um, (laughs) there's all kinds of animals here. There's a mouse. And, um, these are different rooms in the Egyptian book of gates. And you're just having confidence issues, but that's okay. You're being taught. So the unicorn is here to remind you that, um, You have eternal life. So let's look at you with your power. I see what you're going through. I see that you need to stop listening to other people. And I'm not saying this in a narcissistic like, stop, blah, blah, I know better. No, I'm I'm saying this for me and you and everyone listening. We need to trust that if we have a talent of dancing around a fire naked, and licking uh, rocks and wood, and it gives us truth from an ancient time because we can smell something with our nose from a long time ago, and we have this gift that nobody else has, and it's weird, but it actually is very powerful. We could forsake our power because we're too afraid to let our inner child go wild and use our body and our mind to hear spirit and actually obey it. So um, allow your inner child to step forward and do some crazy stuff, you know? It's stuff that other people would judge you about. Go, oh, I don't know about that now. That's not what I heard. What I, my preacher told me and what, my, what they said was this, and I believe them. It's like, yeah, but that's not what Jesus said. Jesus literally hated religion. And Jesus um, (laughs) uh, said never to call anyone father and uh, um, said never to pray in public. And um, he said, if you don't hate your brother, your mother, your sister, even your own life, you can't make it to heaven. And um, yeah, yeah, but no, but yeah. So, 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 um. So here is a tower. And here you are. You're smiling. You have a lot of M energy. It says it did have a mom word here. Like mm, mm, you do have a lot of M energy. So this is a a place.
A Pinocchio is not a real boy. These are human beings who believe in lies. They are a carbon copy of a system that tells you how to talk, what to wear, how to go to work, how to memorize things, how to sit on your butt all day, um, how to believe, how to think about ascended masters. And they are a carbon copy of someone else's truth. They have not awoken to the fairy godmother. The fairy godmother is waiting for the Pinocchio to stop believing lies. If the Pinocchio can stop believing lies, the Pinocchio will open the pineal gland, which is, the, which is actually the meaning of Pinocchio, and they will um, become a real boy. And this means the real truth. So there is a big, huge separation between you and the Pinocchio people. And this is a really, really strong communication. Don't suffer fools. You are literally a place called mystery. Um, you have a dragon above your head. Um, everything around you is... Um, A place and there's birds and um and and i'm sorry but they're not allowed to come and um and we're gonna have to understand this ruthlessness because action is a prayer and it's not okay to this is a dead fish um it's not okay To go to heaven filled with lies about ourselves or God, right? So anyway, you are a you are a place that literally purifies. It looks like they have to go through the waters of baptism, which is the holy dove upside down, with the beak going that way. That's the holy dove. They have to go into the waters of the Holy Dove, feel the energy of the Holy Dove, and then go through this channel. They have to become small to get through this. And you are, um, you will become a place. And there's a, you have a grandmother, you have somebody, uh, you have somebody here, it's an older woman. She, 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 um, and it's not just an older woman, um, so anyway, this is um, um, an older woman who is manifesting as a lion. And this is um, somebody who has a crown, beautiful crown. And um, so this was an, uh, somebody it, that you knew maybe in your life and um, they have become something else. And they are, you are a judge. Um, and, uh, and you're a judge over the land of Oz. So it has the letter Z here, big time. Um, oh, now I know why. Oh, you're holding the phallus of Osiris. So this is the phallus of Osiris. Okay. Now I know why you're standing on a church. Now I know what the what what you are going through and why you had to go through all this to understand yourself and why you're here and how to perfect yourself in order to do the will of God. Because I know I can see that you you um, very much want to do the will of God, um, but um, so your dragon is young. And you're learning. To listen.
There are thousands of people walking this trail. They go into this room. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. This Pinocchio has thousands of souls somehow trapped inside its body. And then when this Pinocchio goes into the Holy Dove, it gets, I don't know what happens, but these souls come out and go into this room, walk this trail to mystery, the mystery schools of the teachings of Christ, really. And they receive a crown and it says, Something O E D. Um, hold on. O E D. M- Moed. Um, Uh, I don't know what that means. I'll look it up. So inside these buildings are students. They're learning. They're um, painting, drawing, There's a horse, a painting, a painting of a horse. They're just, they're just being creative. And so with one hand, they're, they're painting a horse, which is power. With the other hand, their, their hand is shooting electricity out of their hands. All right. All right, so I know what this means. Your actions, whether you're creating a garden or a piece of art, speaks to God more than any word. So if you're painting a horse, you will communicate to God that you're ready to use your power and you have the white hands. This means you're a healer. You should get into Reiki healing. You should get into some kind of healing, but you cannot heal unless... You have balanced and you hear God. And once once you do what God tells you to do and you are ready, then you will learn to make something with your hands that creates power. This is called hunting for power. And so if it's painting a horse, if it's making a garden, if it's feeding the birds, if it's reading a book, whatever it is, it's some kind of action. Cleanliness is next to godliness because our action is a prayer. And this action of painting a horse literally activates the power in your hands. Now, let's talk about, you have 1111 here. Let's talk about why do you have the land of Oz there? Um, And why are you holding the, the phallus of Osiris? Because we all move through the land of Oz to get to Iris. She's the goddess. Oz and Iris, Iris is the goddess of the rainbow. Just say the rainbow's up here, okay? Oz and Iris spells Osiris. So Osiris's body was cut 14 times, seven for her, seven for him. The land of Oz is a place that is connected to the Wicked Witch of the West. It is dominated by the Wicked Witch of the West. It is dominated by the World Wide Web. And the wizard and the witch of the Wicked Witch of the West 
um, the great and mighty Wizard of Oz was full of hot air balloon. So he was a Pinocchio. He was a liar. And so um, when we move out of the moon, which is the lie, the illusion, we go to the sun or the ray of the sun, which is Iris, the goddess of the rainbow. And when we move through this and move through this to completion, like a spiral or the golden ratio, we will connect seven and seven, which is the number 14, and we will be to totally half flesh and half spirit, seven and seven, because the number of the Holy Spirit is 14. Four plus one is five. This is maybe possibly fifth density reality. I don't know. But it's the same story of, of Yeshua. Yah is the moon. Shua is sun. Oz is the prison. Iris is the escape. So you are a prison guard. And how is that going to work in your life? This is how it's going to work. You're going to have discernment. Those people who still believe lies, you're not going to teach them. You are not going to engage or heal or touch or try to help the selfish blind, those who are in sin. The God of the moon from, Babylon, from Babylonian times, his name was Sin. We were born in the moon, which is Sin, which is Oz, which is Yah. So anyone who's still in the moon, which their faces look like the moon, that symbol is inverted this way. Um, you're not going to help them. You help those who are ready to paint what they want in the physical and use their hands like you to become powerful. So this means you're going to set major boundaries against the land of Oz. You do not send your dog to the garden of the wicked witch because your, your Taurus field will get stuck in the tornado of the reptilian wicked witch, which will send you back to Oz. Seek first the kingdom of God and do not suffer fools. If they have not grown their souls like little munchkins short of understanding, sorry, not sorry. It's time to move on. You, they are reflections of who you used to be, mirrors of who you used to be. Now it's time to see yourself and the God within you, and by extension, helping other people see the God within them to become the oracle and to get into the mystery schools by hearing the Holy Spirit only. But what does this have to do with Osiris's phallus? This takes us back to your original piece. I've got to I've got to stop this reading here because I've no 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 I've got until three thirty we're good. Um, I have another reading at three thirty. Um, this goes back to the mermaid. So Dagon was the fish god who ate the phallus of Osiris. Dagon the fish god ate the phallus, which is a church steeple, of Osiris. Who is Dagon's son? Baal. Baal is a uh, two-horned animal human being. And so the steeple and the, the, the phallus of Osiris has something to do with your, the blueprint of your soul. That if the story of Ariel is true, that we were like mermaids and we signed a contract which put you in the dye, which put you in this phallus, which is the church, playing this game like Candyland. Um, the only way out is through the mind of God, which is the eye of the needle, which is the age of Pisces, which is why we're here. And once you go through the eye of the needle, you are no longer um, under an illusion. You go into the truth. And so now you are not inside the phallus or the church. You become part 
and one with the mind of God. And in alchemy, when the dragon eats you, you have entered into the halls of God. So you are part of the hall of God where people come to you to leave the land of Oz, to go to the land of Iris, and to go to the mystery schools of understanding symbology. 111 is the number of the sun. The sun flips every 11 years, and we go through a pole shift. And when, when these Pinocchios open their pineal glands, they can leave the land of Oz, go through the body of the Holy Spirit, and go through the squaring of their mind and their emotions. This is called the compass and the square. And the compass and the square, they go out. They go through the squaring of their thoughts and their beliefs in order to go through the heart chakra. And the heart communicates with the sun. And they walk a pathway to get their crown. And their crown takes them to the golden age of Aquarius, the golden lion. And a myriad of other symbols here as well. So when I saw you in our imagination game, having a wedding ring, standing in water, and you had really good vibes, you're supposed to be a teacher, but you need to be like the ancient one from Doctor Strange. If a Pinocchio comes knocking on your door saying, hey, I want to become powerful, if spirit says no, you kick them out. Um, sorry, but you, they have to be half flesh and half spirit. They cannot just be ego, mind, and flesh and have no, no hearing of spirit whatsoever. They will mess things up. They will bring the Wicked Witch into Emerald City. They will bring Voldemort into, into Hogwarts and they will mess stuff up. So really nobody can enter the kingdom of heaven unless they've gone through the eye of the needle and they have the heart of a child and they hear spirit. So it's a very positive read for you. Um, it looks like a warning for you is to not get sucked into the dice, which is the people who follow death because worshiping outside of yourself is worshiping like a dead Jesus on a cross. Um, realizing that Christ is, everywhere is the age of Pisces. Turn over a stone and there he is also. Cut a piece of wood, there he is also. That means that every person in your life um, could possibly be Christ pushing and pulling you to going through the eye of the needle. And then once we master our mind, we change the cross for a crown. And so you exchange it one day for a crown. And the crown that you're wearing right now still has Pisces on it. But you have spirits teaching you how to seek first the kingdom of God so that you go ahead and just trust. And know that um, this is a game. The World Wide Web is a game. It's an illusion. And you're in a cube, by the way. And the game, each, each, <laughs> each game, each place has a certain... Um, uh, energy like this one says Mars like each room is an energetic place that shifts you into being distracted so every time like oh this is a new place oh this is a new place oh this is distracting me oh this is distracting me no 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 eye of the needle none of this matters All right, I'm ready to talk to you. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, just let you know uh, that this symbol here is um, um, a symbol of receiving. When we give our thoughts, our emotions, our healing, and we, and we help and we work and we think and we do stuff, we have to receive. And receiving is limiting how much you think of the world, fasting from the world, talking to nature, 
meditating, hydrating, eating live food, um, getting into crystals, listening to comedy. It's a big one. Not taking our own emotions and thoughts too seriously. Laughing at ourselves and the world. And then learning to completely divert your attention away from self-indulgence into comedy (laughs) and um, creating things with your hands that are a physical prayer. Once you become really good at it, which I think you already are, um, you are learning to uh, collect energy so that you're feeding your spirit life energy and then your flesh and your spirit works in perfect harmony. Black and white, perfect harmony. Ebony and ivory work together in perfect harmony. So the, they call the rapture, that the rapture comes like a thief in the night, like a lightning strike. And notice that the lightning strike is right above the... Um, the eye of the needle. And then who is right inside the lightning strike, right by the eye of the needle? It's an energy that is not a person. They are an energetic place. And this isn't the holy dove. This is um, Toth. Toth is about, he's the master architect. The art to be the architect of your life is this compass symbol here, the squaring. And you are learning, look, this is God is both male and female. The eye of the needle at the pineal gland of God. And then above the pineal gland looks like a holy dove, but it's also an energy that squares your emotions and your beliefs. And this is a spiritual spirit of God that's kind of like Toth. And Toth is is not God, it is a spirit of God. Now remember in the Bible, it says there are seven spirits of God. There are many spirits of God and they will manifest in your life to teach you. They're not people to worship. They are energies almost like downloads that teach you while you're sleeping, while you're awake and how to illuminate your body like a luminous um, um, rainbow light body um, so that you feed your spirit. Um, You have a circle right here. This means that you may be losing some power right there. Work on your throat chakra. If you have a blocked throat chakra, it means that you're not allowing the voice of the Holy Spirit to flow through you and speak through you because you're worried that you can't speak it appropriately. Um, Don't worry about it. Begin just talking and allow yourself to make mistakes and just practice it. So you're being asked to get into teaching. Um, in whatever form you feel fit, so that you can become a school of mystery and mastery. Instead of having a church, maybe you need to have a school. Mm-hmm. But you know what's really interesting is you... Um, This makes a W also. Um, You, this is like a little child's dress. This is good. This is good. You have the heart of a child. And whose arm is it that made all this? God (laughs) made this game. So it's a cube. We're in a cube. We're in a we're in a weird place. Really, what it looks like is um, if you look at it from afar, it um, it goes out here like this, and this, and then it goes like this, and then like this, and here. And do you see the cube this way and that way? This is becoming the master of the black box of Saturn. 
When the box opens, it makes a cross. Here's a cross. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It looks like a Rubik's Cube, doesn't it? Ah, ha, ha. It's a game. And you're like, I can't figure this out. This game. And you're working on it and working on it and working on it. And, um, and, uh, God says, you're not supposed to be trying to figure it out. Don't you know that the Rubik's Cube is actually a piece of candy <laughs> made out of honey? You're supposed to eat it. And you're like, well, what, are that, what will that do if I eat this? It's not going to put the colors in, in order. It's not going to do anything. And God says, um, Spirit will work it out for you. And all you have to do is live in the moment and not worry about yesterday or tomorrow. And so you just digest the information and allow spirit to show you the way. You don't have to try to think, you don't have to try to work so hard because I think you're doing a great job. But you also need to know you're not alone, angels. So take a screenshot, I'm gonna hold it like this and then I'm gonna go call my second appointment for today. Um, just to let you guys know, if you miss any portion of this live, you can follow me on Mary Moses Art on my YouTube channel. If you are, if you are a subscriber of mine, I'm going to be giving free a free reading today that I will mail to you with a stamp. I'm going to make a card for you that's going to show you um, a message just for you today from your spirit guides with a song on the inside. And I'll send it to you in the mail with a stamp. Okay, so stay tuned because you may get chosen for a free reading and a card that will be sent to you in the mail from me and from spirit. So take a picture of that and then take a picture of this. I'm sure there's more information here than what I was able to convey. I'll try to put it this way. But um, you have to be like Sherlock Holmes and look into it because there's a lot of secrets here. Okay. I just love these readings. I love y'all's energy. <laughs> I love to know be that where you're going and who you are so that I know to call you and say, I see that you have the white hand of God. You're a healer. You know, you have this invisible white hand of God. And some people have white feet. Some people have a white face. This is some kind of strength of spirit on your body. It's your left hand. Your right hand has the eye of the needle. So your left hand is the healer. Your right hand is the worker that works and does things. So interesting, huh? Basically saying that one hand is not you. It's an angel. The other hand is what calls forward the angels. Beep, 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 beep. There we go. Oh, bye, True to You. Thank you for your help. Thanks for being here. Make sure to send me your address. I want to um, send you some gifts. You're so welcome. And you're doing a great job. Don't be so hard on yourself. Don't try to figure out the Rubik's Cube. Eat it. <laughs> and let it digest in your heart. All right, babies, I will be back here in about five minutes to um, read for someone else, and then I will give free readings. All right, it'll be exciting. We'll see you soon. Bye.